In this video, I'll be discussing how God's omniscience and human free will can coexist. But why is this a problem in the first place? Well, the argument, very roughly, goes like this. To have the ability to make a free decision between the options A and B, I need to have the ability to do A and the ability to do B. But if God knows the future, he knows that I'm going to choose to do A, for example. And it's impossible for God to be wrong. So it's impossible for me to do B, and I must do A. Thus, I don't really have the ability to do B, and I don't really have free will. How do we get around this? Well, right off the bat, you should be very suspicious of this argument. Remember, we're not worried about God's power destroying free will. We're worried about God's knowledge, and knowledge can't do anything. So if this objection works, then God can take all my free will away without doing anything. To illustrate, imagine we have Fred here. Fred is omniscient. You've never met Fred because he's trapped inside a box which is floating through space on the other side of the galaxy. Now, if the logic of this objection worked, then somehow Fred should be able to take away your free will while trapped inside that box, even if God didn't exist. That's really weird. So, suspicion about this argument is warranted. But we haven't actually addressed the argument, so let's do that. Here's a timeline with the past, present, and future. Let's focus on an event that happened yesterday. I chose whether to eat an apple or a banana. Now, assuming I have free will, me choosing A can happen, and me choosing B can also happen. Now, let's be specific about what we mean by can. X can happen if and only if it is consistent with everything in the past for X to actually happen. So, free will entails that many possible future choices are consistent with a given past. Now, what happened yesterday is that I actually did choose A. Is that a problem? Nope. Everything makes sense so far. But there's a key point here. The fact that I could have chosen B is still true even though I actually did choose A. This is because the idea of me choosing B would still be consistent with everything that was in the past up to that point, even if I do end up choosing A. So I had the ability to do either, so I had free will. Now, let's extend this logic to the future. Tomorrow, I will need to make another choice between A and B. All the facts about our last scenario will be the same, except we need to change the way they're worded so that they refer to the future. Instead of talking about what did happen, we're talking about what will happen. So, I could say that A or B can happen tomorrow, even though A will happen tomorrow. That's all internally consistent. But, if I can say that A will happen, wouldn't that make B's happening impossible? How can you go from a past where you could truthfully say A will happen to a future where B happens? This seems to me to be the heart of the problem. This question is very old, so a bunch of philosophers have given their two cents on how to answer throughout history. I think the be best answer is called Occamism. Occamism makes a distinction between hard facts and soft facts. A hard fact is a fact that doesn't depend on the future. A soft fact, on the other hand, depends on what will happen in the future. Now, if you accept the Occamist's distinction, what can happen is a question that needs to be decided by hard facts. Soft facts like A will happen don't come into the equation, so these facts can all be held simultaneously. We're almost done here. So, in a decision between A and B, I can do A, I can do B, and I will do A. If we're not careful, then I will do A is going to try and eat the fact that you can do B and make it impossible. But with Occamism, or some other way of viewing statements about the future, this can be wrangled into submission. Now, you'll notice we haven't even mentioned God yet. This is because God's knowledge of a fact has no more power over reality than the fact itself. Remember, knowledge doesn't do anything. So, we can replace the statement that I will do A with the statement that God knows that I will do A without changing the scenario one bit. I still have the free will to choose between A or B, even though I will eventually choose to do A. This is because God's knowledge of the future would be a soft fact, not influencing what I have the ability to do. So we could hold on to simultaneously everything needed for free, free will and everything needed for omniscience, specifically foreknowledge. So this shows that the concepts are all philosophically consistent. But how does this all cash out? What does all this stuff about soft facts and hard facts actually look like? Well, it means that this is how your decisions will affect reality. You can make a choice. God in the past already has a belief about how you will act. 
If, in your free will, you choose to do such and such an action, God will have always believed in the past that this is the action that you are going to make. But you totally can choose to do a different action. If you did exercise this power and choose the other course of action, then God would have believed in the past that that's the course of action you were going to take. God's beliefs are soft facts controlled by your decisions. In short, you control God's past beliefs with your present actions. God doesn't control your actions with his beliefs, and it's in virtue of this control that you possess that you can be truly free. That's the end of my video. Thank you for freely choosing to watch it.